Stuff has arrived this week at Team Shock. Let's see what we've got on this pallet. Hello, welcome to episode 11 of the Team Shock Builders Log. This time we are back here in my shed because we've got a special delivery. Now I've not opened this up yet, so let's take a little look at what we've got on this pallet. So what we've got here is a pallet from Q Laser, who we've uh, just tried for the first time for this new project. So let's get this thing unwrapped and see what we've got. Now it's quite well wrapped, so I've got a knife out here to try and hopefully cut through some of this plastic wrapping that we've got here and get to some of the stuff that we've got inside. One thing I could definitely say, lots of wrapping on here, really well packed. Okay, here we go. Looks like we've managed to get to some of those parts inside. Uh, if we start off, let's open up some of these, uh, these bags here. It looks like we've got some pretty heavy duty bits in here. So it looks like, yeah, here we go. Some five mil thick hard ox pieces. Uh, these have been laser cut. Let's have a look at what we've got in here as well. And if you uh, want to try and guess at what we've got being made with these pieces, give it a go. So we've got lots of five mil thick hard ox plates. These are looking lovely, really like what we've got there. Got to be careful not to tip this whole thing up. I think what I'll do is I'll move these over to the back. Then if we have another look in this other bag we've got here, these look a little bit like some three mil hard ox. And these might give the game away a little bit with what we're making. So we've got some three mil hard ox pieces. These are some uprights here. Got another one of those. And then, well, these look like they might be part of some kind of uh, weapon arm. Maybe if you can guess what we're doing here. And another set as well. So these are looking really, really good. So we've got another uh, upright, another weapon arm. We've got a few more panels here as well. A nice selection of pieces. Some frames. There might be some top panels. And then again, a load more pieces too. We've got some smaller sections here. But what I can say actually is if you look at the quality of the cut on some of these pieces, it's absolutely amazing what they've done. So this is my first time using Q Laser. And I must say, first impressions are looking really, really good. Um, and again, loads and loads of hard ox pieces here. We've got some little mounting plates too. We will have a closer look at these shortly. And then we go right down even to tiny little pieces. And let's see if I can show you. Little tiny pieces like that. And the quality again on these parts is absolutely fantastic. So yeah, loads and loads of smaller pieces in there. I think what I'll do is I'll just dump a few really tiny pieces back in the bag so that I don't lose any. And then I'll pop that one down here too. Now the giveaway might be the bigger pieces. That might be... Sorry, let me try that again. The bigger pieces underneath might be the bits to give it away. They were lurking underneath. So we have got a couple of base plates here. So there's two of them here, made from hard ox this time, and we've got two outer frames as well. Now I'm sure a few people might be able to take a quick guess as to what we've got here, but I'm going to have a go at slotting a few of these pieces together before I give the game away. So let's see how these things slot together, and then you might get a clearer picture of what it is I'm going to be building. So here's what we've got so far, and as you can see, it slots together to make a really nice featherweight size chassis. And what this actually is, is a spare chassis 
for my featherweight flipper slingshot. Uh, the current one has been a little bit mashed up by some vertical spinners, it's a little bit bent and twisted, so I thought I'll get a couple of new ones to put together so that uh, I can keep that old shell for when it wants to get smashed up by spinners. And I've got two new ones, so I actually had parts for two complete with flipper arms as well, so I can swap between them if I need to. It's looking pretty good. And here we go, here are all the parts that we've just unboxed. So what we've got here are two complete chassis for slingshot and uh, also two spare flipper arms as well. So if you have a little look in, so we've got the main outer base and the inner base pieces. Uh, these ones are from Hardox instead of Titanium, uh, just because it's a little bit cheaper. And there was quite a bit of weight to play with, so I think we should be all right. Uh, then we've got, so these are the bungee hooks that uh, attach the flipper arm and various mounting tabs. Uh, then these bits go in the back corners. We've got some parts of the top armour. Rear panels, which already have all the slots uh, cut into. Then the sides, a few more mounting tabs. And then if we come down to here, we've got all these bits sort of go onto the flipper arm with some more mounting tabs here. The top panels, and then some of these little pieces down here weld onto these uh, so that we can fit the carbon fiber tops. We've then got the, the main sort of structure, the bracing down the middle of the machine. So this is where the pneumatic system bolts in uh, to clamp it, and then everything else gets welded into the chassis. We've then got the pieces for the other uh, parts of the flipper arm. So they're like the main braces. And then these parts, and you can see the thickness of these. So these are five mil thick hard ox, and these are for the uh, sort of front corners that go down here, and the actual front panel as well. So quite a nice little haul of parts there. So enough to build two complete uh, copies of the shell, and that should hopefully keep Slingshot going for a little bit longer. And of course, all those hard ox parts that we've seen are going to be spare parts for this robot here. So this is Slingshot. It is my featherweight full pressure flipper and it is designed to compete in the full combat category, which is actually quite rare. You don't tend to get many featherweight flippers that are willing to go up against the spinners nowadays. And that's because these things are quite fragile. And you know, a shell like this is pretty tough, but if it gets chewed up by a spinner at an event, it's very difficult to repair. There's not normally welding facilities on site at most of our featherweight events. So the idea is these two complete spare shells mean that if this one gets destroyed, I can transfer the parts across into the spare chassis and continue fighting for the rest of the competition. And of course, all the hard ox pieces today were provided by Q Laser Limited. Uh, they have done a phenomenal job and I will put a link to their website in the description below. So if you wanna get any of your own hard ox pieces cut, please do get in touch with them and I'm sure they will do a brilliant job for you like they have done for me. So that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of the Team Shop Builders Log. Next week, we are going to be having a little live event update as we look ahead to some of the competitions and events we will be competing at this year. And also, we will have a little update on two of our heavyweights as both Manta and Afterchop are getting ready to go. So don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our content. And new episodes will be released every Saturday at 7pm right here on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time on the Team Shop Builders Log.